Welcome to a community conversation. My name is Gina and I am from the Friends of the Wallingford Animal Shelter. I'm here today with Carol and we wanted to discuss about the pets in our community. So Carol, as you know, we yes. had started the Friends of the Wallingford Animal Shelter about three years ago uh, because we saw a need in the shelter. Uh, there was need for assistance with volunteers and a few other things. And through those years, we've also discovered that there was some need in the community itself. What have you found to be the biggest need? I think the economy has been hard on a lot of people. So there have been a lot of strays, um, which makes it challenging for the shelter. People fall on hard times and um, their pets get sick or there can be a tragedy like a fire or something like that. And part of what we've been doing is community outreach and helping those people with these problems. Mm -hmm. Whether it's, you know, getting the pet spay or neutered or vet costs, which everybody knows are very high. We're, we're trying to branch out from the shelter and do more with, within the needs of the community. With municipal shelters, a lot of times there is a, uh, people may not be aware of things they can and cannot do. So. One big thing we've noticed, and exactly what you touched on, was the fact that the economy is not as abundant as it had been, and mm -hmm. it seems as though animals, unfortunately, are, are the ones that suffer. So with that, and seeing every single day, it seems as though you're seeing lost pets. That is really heartbreaking to see. Mm -hmm. And with the shelter, we just we have been helping with getting a chip to every animal that leaves. And I think that is something that's so important for the community. It is. And it's something that is not super expensive for people who, you know, may have to pay for it on their own, but every animal that leaves the shelter, we definitely want to make sure if, if God forbid something happens to them again, that they will be. Right. And that's, fun. that's one of the things we do to help in tandem, you know, with the shelter is mm -hmm. the, uh, the microchipping for every animal that gets adopted and the senior assessment, which is blood work and just, you know, just to get a good bill of health for the animal so that if someone comes in and oh, they're like, oh, it's a senior, I don't think I'd be interested, you know, the animal control officers can show these potential adopters that, look, this, this pet is in good health and good standing, you know, and possibly they can they can have a chance where maybe they wouldn't if they didn't have that information in front of them. Right, which like Winston, who finally just got adopted, he yes. had a um, yes. A, we could see that there was something that he needed additional. Yep, he needed a daily pill, and um, yeah, he's happy. He's thriving. Yep. Gina, what do you think the need is within the community? So I think education is a big part of what we try to do, and I think with that, sometimes understanding that. You know, every day we're going to see people posting about cats being out, you know, in their yard or they, they found one or, you know, lost one. Sometimes those are pets. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those are people's pets who go out. Cats are completely different than dogs. Dogs have to be registered, uh, which, by the way, the month of June mm -hmm. is when you have to register, yep. license your dogs. They're, they're different, and a lot of times people will let them out. That is their personal choices. What we would recommend is to have them chipped so that that way if people are picking up these cats and bringing them in then they're going to be found and discovered that they belong to someone that's probably our biggest thing is is, is chipping so not only us doing it for the sh the pets that are leaving the shelter but also explaining how important that is for people the only time that the animal shelter really does take those cats in is if they are injured and and we hate to see injured animals mm -hmm. but you know, when people are concerned about lost cats, the best thing to do is have them chipped. And so many people are finding that cats are going to their front doors and back doors and they're not leaving. Yeah. And they're wondering, whose cat is this? Or is this cat out there all by themselves? Did they come and pick me? What should I do? Right. So that's also another thing that, you know, we're trying to educate people with. Right. I mean, I know my cat personally wants to leave the door you know, every time I open the door, he's he's looking. Thankfully, although he did come from the shelter, so, <laughs> <laughs> so he may have made the escape one time, one time before. But um, yeah, I mean, definitely making sure that people realize that the cats are possibly someone's pet, and you know, unfortunately, the shelter can't pick up every 
cat that's called exactly on. exactly and there are people that do reach out to us that have situations where you know they have a colony in their backyard and they're feeding them and that they may need help and assistance and you know we're trying to broaden our horizons with may, possibly trying to learn the skill of you know trap neuter and and return and just to help within that process at some point so carol as you know we've been dabbling a little bit with the fostering uh you yes. were benefit of having a foster cat or now or was a kitten yes now cat yes uh, tell me about that so that's uh, little miss Catalina who I call her my little um, and she was fostered uh, by one of the people in our group and she had fostered the mischievous six it was um, a litter of six kittens that were found um, she took them into her home and uh, she fostered them for you know for quite a while until they were about six months seven months and then slowly uh, one by one they got adopted and I was one of those recipients and it's 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 a joy it's such a difference to see a pet that was fostered they come to you and they know how to cuddle they know how to appreciate the love they're not as stressed even though you know she came from her home to our home there is an adjustment period but she was so far ahead of one of my other cats that I also adopted from the shelter. It's just, it's just such a beginning for them that you just, you can't express the difference um, between the two. And, you know, luckily they're, they're both, they're both fine now, but there is a difference with Catalina, a big difference because she was fostered in someone's home and, and had that human contact. And we also, so that's from the beginning of life. But we also have fosters who take care of those animals. Yes, the, we do. Who are at, unfortunately, the end of their life. Yes. And our fosters do that so effortlessly and give so much love. They do. And it is such a wonderful thing to see because these animals who, you know, came to the shelter <clears throat> for one reason or another probably didn't spend their life in a shelter, mm -hmm. don't need to die in a shelter. Right. So... The fostering is a huge part that really helps. Uh, I know that we get questions about that so far. It's a case-by-case -case scenario. Sometimes there's cats that absolutely cannot uh, or are definitely not flourishing. Right. Being. right. But it is a good option for someone who doesn't know if they want to get another pet to say, hey, maybe we'll foster mm -hmm. a dog or a cat and let's see how it goes. You know, or they don't want that you know, lifelong commitment, but hey, let's do this. You know, so that's another option for people. I myself was a foster fail for mm -hmm. a dog uh, that was really more so to make sure it was going to fit in the, the house mm -hmm. because it is, it's a foster fail, proud foster fail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it does, it makes you feel good. Yeah, it does. It's hard to express to people that uh, this was, you know, a first for me and, um, it does make you feel good when you look at them. Yeah. You have a great appreciation. So we've recently also been dealing with the community more than we have. And I know that's because we started with the animal shelter, but then different things kind of started to show up. And I guess we're really looking to help as much as we can and, and always looking for volunteers and always mm -hmm. looking for always peoples with creative ideas yes. and that's something that I know I think the community would benefit from too yes yes so reach out to us and um, we would we would love to have you come on board there's plenty of opportunities for anyone so Gina something that's new for us this year is a scholarship yep. so tell us a little bit more about that yep high school uh, high school graduate who is going on to some form of education. We're not saying four-year, two-year could be going into um, vet tech, whatever whatever they're looking to go into. We are offering a scholarship. What the requirement is, is that they have helped us. So we mm -hmm. do have you know, opportunities. It's difficult with the shelter because you have to be over 18 to deal with yes. the dogs. And we ask certain qualifications to deal with the cats, but there is still things that we offer, including, 
you know, we have bottles and cans that mm -hmm. we have people go through. We have fundraising events, fundraising events. We have clean the shelter cleanup. Mm -hmm. So there's always a variety of things. So we're not putting a maximum amount of hours, minimum amount of hours that we need the students to actually um, do, you know, do. It's more of who has volunteered and then they fill out the application that would be at their guidance counselor's office and then we we'll go through that to be able to. And is to, there an essay involved? And Yeah, so we do have, uh, they'll have to write an essay mm -hmm. and that will be basically depending on, you know, they might not have had animal contact because again with the age we sometimes aren't able to allow them to be with the animals, but it would be about what's benefited them for volunteering with the animal shelter or it could be about, you know, an animal that may be about how, how an animal has changed their, their yeah. life in some way. Yeah, those type of things. Thank you for joining us for a community conversation.